Hello, everybody. I am Bill Harris here with Life Questions, and welcome to this program, which gives you a cutting-edge Bible-researched answers to the questions about life. We have amassed a panel of local ministers to review your questions from the Word of God to provide you with answers. I want you to meet them right now. First up is Pastor Rick Lamb of the Hume United Methodist Church, followed by Pastor Randy Davis of the Bridge Church here in Lima. And then there's Pastor Tyler Perry of the Anastas Church in Lima, Ohio as well. And lastly, we have Pastor Greg Fox of the Sugar Grove and Bluffton Trinity United Methodist Churches. Well, happy to have you with us today, gentlemen. And let me just say from the top that uh, those of you who were watching last week know that our last question dealt with the impact of sin. And one viewer writing in, how do you get out of the pattern of sin? I asked that question quite late in the program when we ran out of time on it. So I'd like to pick up that again. And then, of course, Pastor Lamb, you've done some research on that. Yes. So could you speak on that? Well, I sure. And um, uh, to begin with, uh, my life verse is 1 John 1, 9. Uh, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to uh, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, so it's not just the sin that you've committed right then, but any unknown unrighteousness in you mm -hmm. is completely removed. So, uh, and and this is an important verse because we we sin every day, and uh, just like having to take a bath every day, we also need to uh, cleanse our spirit every day, and and. But Satan says, well, you can't sin one minute and confess it the next. That's not fair to God. But it turns out Satan's not really caring about what God thinks or uh, feels anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, what he's trying to do is keep us from repenting. And, but we can. We can commit a transgression against God in one minute and confess it the next and be free from the guilt of that transgression. Mm -hmm. Return to uh, what I call 100% love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, the gifts of the uh, fruits of the, of the Spirit, Spirit out of uh, Galatians 5. And, uh, and, and once again, return to the joy of the Lord. And, and that's so important for us to have that joy of the Lord. And so just... So you know that uh, it's not hopeless. You're not in a circumstance where you are trapped and there's no way out. In fact, God insists on giving us all that way of escape because Jesus didn't die for nothing. He died for all of us. And, and he wants us to, to trust him and to uh, rely on the, the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit through the blood of Christ in our lives. So... Mm -hmm. Anybody else have an idea? That's good. I, I mean, I think what you said there is so important. You know, we confess to God for forgiveness. He gives, That's right. He extends us forgiveness. No matter the mistake we've made, there's not a sin too great that God cannot forgive you from and redeem mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. from. And so I believe that with all my heart. And I think confessing to one another is huge. Yes. The Bible says that we confess to others for healing. James talks about 100%. it. A hundred percent. What stays in the dark builds shame. Mm -hmm. It builds, you know, grief in our lives. But when we bring that out of the dark, we, we, we receive heal, healing, we receive, yeah. you know, life. And I mm -hmm. think there's so much power in that. And the only other thing I would add today is that, you know, find somebody you trust and share that with them. Right. If they're a believer in Jesus, they can build you up. Make sure it's somebody who knows Jesus, follows mm -hmm. God well, mm -hmm. and they can help you as you try to get out of this pattern of sin. But remember, the power of the Holy Spirit will deliver you from this as you yeah. surrender to him and submit to him and then trust yeah. those around you to help walk that out. And sure. the key has got to be surrender. Wouldn't you say, Pastor Davis? Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah, and the challenge is many church people don't know how to handle it, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, they maybe never had had to confess something like we're talking about and a pattern of sin. And, and so it's very important for the church to know how to respond to people that are far from God mm -hmm. and they want to come back and they want to return. And the Bible says, restore them gently and watch yourself so you don't stumble into sin. Yeah. But church people, listen, when, when somebody comes in and they're hungry for God, forget the clothes police and, and what they look like or how they come in. Man, if they got a heart for God, just love them where they are. That's right. And let God work on that that edge or whatever we we see. And uh, you know, most of the church doesn't look like it used to. 
And I myself this last week found myself between two weddings at a baseball game with a suit on. And the kids from my church were looking at me kind of funny. And I realized I don't even wear a suit at church. But they saw me at a ball game wearing a suit, and they were kind of, it was kind of a dichotomy for them, you know, like, what's wrong with our pastor, you know? But, but the point is, it's not about that stuff. It's, it's where's their heart. So when, when somebody comes into your church and their heart wants God, can we give it to them? Can we yeah. show it to them? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and not judge them. Find out where they're at. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe people are so hungry for what we have. And some of us don't know how to give it away. We received it so long ago, Bill, maybe we forgot. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. but man, we, we need to be in, in touch with the world we live in because there's broken people everywhere. Oh, yes. And it's never been more evident than through this last year of the pandemic. People are crying out. They're hurting. They're lonely. And man, we got the answer. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when people come in, can the church handle it? Mm-hmm. And if they can, they'll grow. Yep. And if they don't or refuse to, they're, they're going to just shut the door someday. You know, Randy, you said something that, it's, it's just, it's in the Bible. And, and you said it a little bit ago that, you know, God requires us to do two things. Love him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and love others as you love yourself. It does not tell us we have to like that person. We don't have to like what that person did. We don't have to agree with them. That's right. But we have to love them. Absolutely. When they come in, come into your presence. I'm not saying come to the church. If you meet somebody on the street, That's it. they're down and out, and they're covered with <clears> tattoos, <throat> and they've been doing drugs, and they ask for help. You don't have to like the fact that they're doing that. You don't have to agree with the fact that they've been on drugs. But you know what? Show that person some love and caring. That doesn't mean you have to take them in your home. But show the love of God to them. Pray with them. Make some small gesture. Let them know they are also a child of God. Just because you sit in church doesn't make you a child of God. Amen. We're all children of God, no matter where we're at in our walk and life. We've got to remember that. Yeah, which calls to mind another question that came in from viewers that asks, what is the difference between being a good person and being a Christian? Can I say something to that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I live on this uh, okay. because, and, and hear me out, church people, don't get mad at me, <laughs> but some of the nicest people I've ever met have never professed Jesus as Lord. And, and some, some of the, of the meanest workers. people I've ever met <laughs> go to church every Sunday. Amen. And that's sad. Yeah, yeah. And it's no wonder that so many people that are good natured, they serve well, mm-hmm. but they don't know Jesus, don't want to be like the church because so many people in the church don't really reflect what Christianity is all about. Right. And so I always say this, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a Big Mac. Now, if you go enough, you'll look like it and smell like it. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> That's the challenge. We're not really reciprocating out what God has given us and the chance we have to change lives and, and to be a real Christian and a not, not just a churchgoer. And I do qualify that all the time. I have three types of people in my church, fully devoted, committed followers of Christ, people searching for Christ, and people have no idea why they're there. Yeah. And you know what? That to me is a good blend for a church. If everybody in our congregation knows Jesus, we're not doing our job. We need to be looking for those people. They're good people. Yeah. Man, they got great hearts. They just haven't professed Christ. They're one prayer away from greatness. Amen. And we can help them with that. We know the prayer. So I didn't mean to cut you off, but it's like, That's okay. it's this whole thing of like, man, we've got to do a better job in the church world, reflecting Jesus to the non-church world, because man, there's a divide. It's greater now than it's ever been. And it's not going to get any closer unless the church starts doing our job. Mm-hmm. Well, and to follow on that, those that don't know Jesus are watching us. Now, always. Always watching us. I heard the story of a fellow out in California, and he had a, a, a business a, a, a renting hotels and motels and that sort of thing. Guy came to do his lawn, and the guy asked, you know, do you want me to, uh, to build this to your business? And he says, no. He said, that would, that's unethical. I can't have you be you know, billing my business for work that I had, personal work that I had done on my lawn. And he said, you know, I know you go to that church down the street. And right away you recognize, oh, yeah. Satan was setting a trap. Mm-hmm. Satan was setting a trap. Uh, there was a garbage man picking up trash for Pastor uh, Chuck um, uh, out in California, uh, Calvary Chapel. And... Uh, and one day, after years, he said, 
I've never dumped any trash out of your trash that was inappropriate. I've been looking for 20 years and I've never found oh, wow. anything inappropriate mm. in your trash can. I mean, they're watching from all angles. Right. We got to do better. We just got to do better. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's think, like the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I think we just, we have to def agree on what our definition of good is too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's morally good, there's socially good, there's generous, there's kind, but you know, we believe as followers of Jesus, there's only one who is perfect and good, and that is Jesus, right? Amen. And, and every good and perfect thing the Bible says comes <clears throat> from our Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the difference between being a Christian and being a good person societally is faith in Jesus Absolutely. and allowing him to transform our lives. Yes. That's what makes us good. His, his righteousness that comes on us. We're not good on our own. No There's way. nothing I can do that before God is good. That's it. Right. But through, through the power of the Holy Spirit, because of what Jesus done for us, we're good and we're righteous. That's, That's a good point. I mean, because we, we don't do good things because we want to get to heaven. Right. We're already entered into heaven and we uh, do good things because... We're a child it's of God. Overflow. Yeah, it's yeah. just overflow of the goodness that God has poured into us. We pour out to others. You know, that's that's the, the the neat part about it is you don't do good things to get to heaven. Yeah. But once you've accepted Christ and you know your your written, name's written in the in the book of life, you want to do those good things. Yep. And and one of the newer Christian songs out right now it's it's called It Starts Right Here. You know, we were just talking. You don't go to church to find a pastor that's going to help you do things right. You don't go to church to find a good person to show you what to do right. It starts right here. It starts with me. It starts with Rick. It starts with Randy. It starts with Rick, Tyler, Bill. It starts with us. That's how the good things happen. It starts with us to do the right thing. Absolutely. Not just in the building. Everywhere you are. <laughs> everywhere you are. That's right. And I, I guess a lot of people do get that mixed up, particularly people who are not taught uh, the Word of God enough. That, and, and what do you do for the person who says, well, you know, I may not be a Christian, but I'm living clean, a clean life. Yep. I don't hurt anybody and the like. Surely that should be considered uh -huh. uh, so that I can get into heaven. So there's only two things you have to do to get to heaven. That's to confess your sins to Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness and, then pro and proclaim him as Lord and Savior. Once you've done it, your ticket's punched. Yep. You're there. And from that point on, it's when you have to start, you start doing the good things because you want to. And if you're... If you ever notice somebody, in my, and before I gave my life to Christ, you'd always see these people, and I always thought they was up to something because they, they're always smiling, they're always excited. And finally I asked one lady, I said, what is it with you? I've known you for 20 years, and you're always happy, you're always smiling. Even when I know you have issues, you're smiling. She goes, that's my Jesus joy. And I never <laughs> thought about it until she said that. Think about it. It doesn't mean when you're a Christian your life is perfect. Right. It doesn't mean you're not going to have troubles. But when you give your life to Christ, yep. you've got that inner Jesus joy that you just can't, you can't help but let people know about it. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. an amazing thing you've got to experience. And I think, the, the, I think the challenge, Bill, is, is going back to love God, love others. The more love God, or more I love God, the more of his love's in me. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard to give it away. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. it just kind of oozes out, right? <laughs> so if you're filling your reservoir every day, you're going to have something to give away. That's right. But it goes back to you've got to be having time with God. And uh, in the break, we were talking and Jen said something about, you know, prayer. Yeah. And the more I talk to God, the more I have to say to others. That's helpful. <laughs> Sometimes I have a lot to say, but that ain't very helpful. But man, when you're talking to God, you're spending time with the Lord. You got something to give away. So it goes back to the same thing. Just love the Lord with all your heart. And, and the Bible also says to whom much is given, much is required. Yes. I've, I've received a lot of grace. So I got a lot of grace to give away. Amen. Amen. You know, I think some people may didn't get the grace quotient. Right. <laughs> but they sure don't seem to have much. You know, it's like, where's your grace at? But, uh, you know, and I, I want, I hope the church will become more grace filled than we've ever been to reach those people that are far from God. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'd like to address another uh, question came, that came in from our viewers. And that is, does your choice of friends matter to your faith? We'll deal with that and more when we return. Stay with us. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. 
You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back. Thank you for staying with us. Here's a question that came in from one of our viewers. Does your choice of friends matter to your faith? Does your choice of friends matter to your faith? Who wants to tackle that one first? Well, I have a verse out of Proverbs 13, 20, which says, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. So that's a good instruction for us that, uh, that choosing your friends does make a difference. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, yeah, having the right friends makes a big difference in our lives. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I think absolutely it does, you know. Um, one of the biggest things that I always grew up with, and I think we all have too, you have this, if you've grown up in church, you have this weird split of, should I spend time hanging out with these people who don't believe what I believe, and maybe they don't act the way that I act, and these people who do, but I want to show love to these people over here. I want to show them who Jesus is. I want to be a good representation of my faith, but I also want to make sure that I'm growing in my faith. And so I think there's a balance there. And I think the balance, at least for me growing up, was those who know Jesus, those who are close to God, follow God, I'm going to make them my inner circle. I'm going to allow them to sharpen me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to allow them to, you know, hold me accountable. We're going to mm -hmm. walk every single day together. But there might be this group of people who doesn't know Jesus yet. Well, it's my responsibility to share Jesus with them, right. be around them right. enough, build a relationship with them so they can trust me. So it's not just my words about Jesus right. that they see, but it's my actions. Mm -hmm. And so, but I think that what you don't want to do, though, is say, I'm going to invest all of my time and, and I'm going to seek after wisdom from people who don't know God. No, we're going to find our wisdom. We're going to find our encouragement from people who know Jesus. But we are going to make ourselves accessible to those who don't know him so that we can have an influence with them. Right. You know, you're, you're very good point. And, and I've in my life have been on both sides of the fence. I've been pretty ordinary in the day and, and, and now I'm walking with Christ and I'm thankful for that. But I have not cast away all my friends from the ordinary side of my life. I almost feel compelled to spend time with them. Not only do we have good friendship and, and relationship, but those folks don't know Christ. Right. And is that not our job? Absolutely. To make disciples of men. Yes. You know, I totally agree with Tyler. We need to stay with our, our, our friends that, are, that have the faith, keep our steel, sharp, steel sharp and steel, keep our, our base, our, our inner circle. But we still need to reach out with them folks that are out there because, for one, God demands us to love on them. And if they're, especially if you've been friends for a long time, you still care about them people, you still love them, you still care about them, but you need to spend that time with them. So they may have the opportunity, plant the seed. And I, I've always complained about that. I seem to be the one who's sowing the seeds all the time and then the other friends of mine come in and they do the harvest <laughs> part. You know, that's, that, that's terrible. But you know what? We all have a job. And, and I think that's our job, even with friends that we, that, that aren't quite exactly in our inner circle, we need to help influence that. Absolutely. You know. That's exactly what happened in my life. I uh, came home from being in California for a lot of years, and uh, uh, I came home specifically because my dad didn't know the Lord, and it was my desire to uh, introduce him, and I spent a lot of time. We became friends after years of being away, and, and that friendship really developed and blossomed, but I never did lead him to the Lord. My mom's pastor, on the other hand, a former Marine, my dad was a Marine, he was a Marine, they got together and the pastor led him to Jesus. Well, so. you were just a lowly sailor, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we started this show with the how to get out of a pattern of sin. Yeah. And I wrote this down, I didn't share it, but one of the, you know, change your habits, change your patterns, and friends sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to know the age of the person that wrote the question. Yeah. You know, if it's a teenager, I'm going to tell them, hey, you really need to guard yourself, yeah. okay? Because like we talked about, Maurice Claret had coined a phrase, supposedly, I don't know if he did, but show me your friends, I'll show you your future. So as a young person, you need to be very careful who your friends are, your closest friends, the guy mm -hmm. you're trying to be like, the guy you're following. Whereas an adult, I was asked a question at a pastor's conference one time. The guy said, how many of you as pastors have a very close non-Christian friend? I raised my hand, you know, and, 
And I was, was like, the only one. I was like, wait a minute, did I hear the question right? Because nobody <laughs> else is raising their hands. And we're guilty sometimes. We can live in a bubble, so we don't have unchurched friends. Mm -hmm. And I think as you age in your Christianity, that's when you do go back and engage those people. You know, for a time, I remember there was a, a, an area of my town I couldn't go to. And I had some buddies that hung out, and I'd been there every week for three years. And that's where you go and you get in trouble, you know. I couldn't go. And my one buddy said, yeah, you don't love us anymore. And it hurt because I'm trying to be a sure. Christian. I'm trying to follow sure. Christ. Now I can go back. Or even a long time ago, I could go back. But I had to get strengthened first. So, right. again, if you're a young person, you need to be strong in your faith before you step out and do some of this. And as an older person, don't get so religious and so self-absorbed in church that you forget there are a lot of unsaved neighbors and friends that you can mm -hmm. minister to and bless them. Yeah. And I think that's our call. All right, I want to turn our attention yep. to a, a related question. And we're talking about relationships here in the light. And this one says... What would be the impact of your life if you marry a believer versus marrying a non-believer? What's the impact? What's the difference there? And we're assuming that the person that's getting married is a believer? Yeah, in other words, one, one person is a believer, the other is a non-believer. But in, person, one in, in one instance, the person that's getting married is a believer marrying. An, uh, yeah. In other words, you've got you, you've got essentially what the Bible talks about is an unequally yoked situation. Yep, so, yep. in other words, if you're a believer, what's the difference in you marrying another believer versus marrying a non-believer? I, I got that's the easiest it. answer for it. It's actually a commandment. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. unbelievers yeah. Okay. So when I was a youth pastor, I had a lot of missionary dating going on. <laughs> you know, I call I'm, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go date this person. I'm going to get them to Jesus yeah. and everything's going to be all right. And it can work. Okay. I'm not going to deny that it has worked and somebody's mama somebody did it, dating. but I would rather all of our young men and young women go find somebody that already has faith yeah. and growing your faith together. Because what happens is more times than not, the person that's unequally yoked, gets pulled away from Christ instead of the other person coming to Christ. Yeah, right. yeah. And, and, you know, just with a little bit of history lesson, you can show young people real quickly, guys, don't do this. Mm -hmm. What's happened in our culture today is, you know, the young people say, well, there are no Christians. Right. And that's why we need more church fellowship <laughs> so yeah. they can get to know yeah. other yeah. kids that also are trying to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And I always say you get where you go to get it. If you go to the bar, you're going to get a barmaid. If you go to the bar, you're going to get a drunk. Young people, if you serve Jesus, that's not the place to find your future mate. Yeah. You know, but if you go to church, you may still get a barmaid or a, or a drunk. But at least they're at church, and that's a start. But you need to find people that are really following their faith because God says it's going to end in destruction. Yeah. It's not going to end well. And, and it's not that we want to sit here 10 years from now and say, we told you so. Mm -hmm. I never want to be that pastor. But at the same time, the decision you make today is eternal. Yeah. And to be unequally yoked is eternal. It will cost you. And, and can it work? Yeah, of course. We've got that one exception to the rule. But be very careful uh, when you make that choice. Yeah, and marriage is a covenant between a God, or man, woman, and God. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if you have one partner in that relationship that will not recognize God as an equal member of your marriage in the center of your marriage, marriage already has obstacles. It's already got tension. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and introduce mm -hmm. that dynamic to it. Now you've yeah. got nothing but tension and obstacles in a lot of ways. You know, you're, if you're the believer, you're going to want to follow Jesus. You're going to want to do things that are going to require faith. And your partner may not be in on that. You know, when I talk about finances, and we, we've discussed that as being something that's really, really important in following Jesus before, you think about the object of tithing. Well, that's already could be a conversation in a marriage that's difficult. Well, now you've got how someone do who doesn't believe kids? in Jesus. Yeah, how are you, you going to raise your kids? How are we going to spend our money? How are we going to serve? How are we going to give of our time? What's our priority? What's our focus? All of that now is up in the air because both partners aren't following Jesus. They're not seeking God. It's like mm -hmm. sitting on a three-legged chair. Yeah. <laughs> One of the legs is missing, and so what do you get? You fall down all right. the time. Did you have any thoughts on that? No, I, I totally agree with all three pastors. And, and, and the biggest thing we have to remember, when you finally get married, there's not a deadline. You don't have to do it by the time you're 20 or by the time you're 18 or, or 40. You've got you to gotta trust God enough, have enough faith in God that he will provide you with that mate, with that spouse that is meant for you. That's good. It's not like the lottery. You don't <clears throat> try six or seven until you get the right one. You know, God asked us to, to, to yoke with one person in your life, and that person is to be your mate. And 
even those of us that get pretty ornery, the good Lord has <laughs> that made out there for you. Yeah, yeah. And if it wasn't for my mate, I probably wouldn't be here today. So yeah. I thank God for my wife and, and everything she's done for us and us and our family. Yeah. It's, he knows who is your mate and yeah. let him lead you. Good I know of a lady that was 59 years old before she had her first husband. So, so you know, it, it's never too late. Right. Now, the other challenge, though, Bill, is we've got to remember those that were already married and one comes to faith does not give you right to just kick your That's other right. mate out. No, <laughs> absolutely. You know, so well we're not said. talking to married Very people. Well we're talking to people that haven't chosen yet. Correct. Yeah. There's a big difference because, man, once you're married, as a pastor, I got to do everything I can to keep you together. Yeah. And uh, there's no get out of jail free card because you found no. Jesus after you married <laughs> a loser. Absolutely not. Uh, you know, so you got to, there's scripture to that too, but mm -hmm. that wasn't the question. Yeah. I just want to make sure that people understand once a decision's been made, you got to work at it, stay yep. together, yep. period. Excellent. Here's one last question. We've got less than three minutes left in the program. What does it mean to serve others? And what are some of the things I can do in my town? I would love to go on a missions trip, but I don't have the finances. So I thought I would focus on my own town. Who yeah. picked me? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Matt Naylor. Got 90 seconds to go on that question. Okay. Matt Naylor uh, over at... Uh, uh, the Alliance Church on 81 has a ministry mm -hmm. called Community Relief. Mm -hmm. uh, it's communityrelief.net. And uh, from time to time, he gathers a group of people together and they go into uh, a particular area and they fix roofs and they do uh, all kinds of home repairs. That's their focus. Mm -hmm. And and they do it for no money at all. They they give you a, a T-shirt and food while you're there. And, uh, and uh, it's a great ministry for those that would like to go on a mission trip but can't afford it or don't have the time. You can just come. You can come for a day. You can come for the whole weekend or whatever they're doing. Okay. Very good. Anybody else on that? Yeah, I, you know, I, I look at the scripture, it says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost. And I think you kind of earn your way to the uttermost. Okay, I don't think you start there. I think mission should start at home. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to go to an island where nobody speaks English and everybody gets saved, and that's great. But mission should start in your home. You yep. should start with your neighborhood. And so I would encourage this person, man, do some random acts of kindness. It's not that hard. Yep. Uh, we had a mean neighbor, and my wife doesn't like me telling the mean neighbor story, but he was. He threatened to kill my wife or not my wife, my child and my dog on the first day we moved into the house really? for getting on his yard. He was an angry, mean person. <laughs> and that wasn't in line, but it was another town and another place, so just make that clear. But uh, Christmas comes around, and she always made pumpkin bread. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I want you to take this over there. And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> and she goes, yeah. And, and three years later, that man mm -hmm. told his, his brother, mm -hmm. who was my custodian at my church, that God had changed his heart. Because even though he was mean, my wife showed him kindness. Excellent. And it's not we're that hard. We're going to have to end on yep. that note. We're all out of time. Thank you very much yes, for sir. that story. That's it for this week. We'll be back again next week. And we want to thank our panelists and for all the things that you've shared. And we certainly hope we've helped you out there. Tune in again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>